hey guys welcome back to our channel by the title you already know what this video is it is the postpartum video um, my experience after my c-section and i'm just going to give you all the juicy details of how i felt about it um afterwards the recovery process i'm also going to be giving you guys i guess is it still considered a bump date the bump update hmm I don't know, but I'm gonna be showing you guys what my belly looks like four weeks postpartum. Um, and I'm gonna insert some clips of what it looks like prior to me delivering, just so you can get an idea. Um, also keep in mind, everybody's postpartum experience is very different. Um, my experience is gonna be different than yours. Um, and just, yeah. Before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your family and friends. Also, be sure to comment down below your thoughts on this video as well as any other videos you guys want to see in the future. So before we start, I guess I'll show you what my belly looks like. Um, so this is currently, I guess I'll pull down my leggings first. So this is my belly, four weeks postpartum then I'll give you guys an up-close view of what it looks like so where to begin okay so I guess I can start with the very beginning of the pregnancy um, very beginning of the pregnancy I was 145 pounds which is I guess pretty average for my age height all of that body mass information really don't know too much but I guess that is average um and by the time i got to the end of my pregnancy i had gained 30 pounds so i was 175 um 100 bella's waking up <laughs> so i was 175 pounds um at the uh, at the day of delivery um, I am currently today 145 pounds, so four weeks, no exercise, I'm still not clear to work out or anything. Um, four weeks, I guess, just breastfeeding, um, have, making sure my water intake is good, and just walking. Um, that's all I've been cleared to do is just walk. Um, I've lost all 30 pounds that I have gained throughout my pregnancy, so I guess that's pretty really, that's really, really good. Um, really didn't have too bad of an experience as far as um, weight gain throughout my pregnancy. So I am very grateful for that. Now there is, I did have a C-section, so I do have um, a, scar incision, a scar from when the incision did happen. Um, it's a low scar, it's not a high scar. So if you don't know what that is, the low scar is one that goes from left to right. A high scar is one that goes up and down. Um, typically, if you have a low scar, um, that means for a second delivery, um, a second child, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a C-section delivery. You have a good chance of doing a vaginal delivery um, if that is what you desire to do, which is that something that we desire to do, but we're not opposed to C-sections either, being as though my experience afterwards was really, really good. So after the C-section, after they wrote me out of the operating room and they took, took us to our... Um, they call it the mother baby um, mother baby wing which is where mother and baby will be recovering from delivery um the first couple of hours were very very strange um i had a catheter and of course because i had an epidural um i requested an epidural if you don't know what i'm talking about be sure to go ahead and click out of this video and go and watch our labor and delivery story um, so I did get a catheter because I did have an epidural um, and with the c-section you will also have a catheter as well um, so I delivered the baby at 6 50 p.m. and my catheter was removed at 6 30 ish a.m. so it was removed it was it didn't really hurt or anything it was a very simple process getting up out of the bed after the c-section was very 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 difficult i really couldn't get up without the help of a nurse or without the help of theo so i'm very grateful that he was there 
um it's definitely very difficult because you just had abdominal surgery you just had surgery um basically right in the middle of your body you just had a surgery i was not able to really go to the bathroom by myself so i did need assistance from the nurse as well as from theo to go to the bathroom um, I did have a wrap, a postpartum wrap after the surgery, um, and what the wrap did, the wrap just sucked all of my organs, tried, it helped me, helped my body get my organs back in place. I 100% recommend you do wear the band. Um, the hospital does provide you with the band, and they will provide you with some to take home. Well, at least my hospital did, don't know what, every, I don't know if every hospital is the same. Um, however, I did purchase one on Amazon. I will link that down below and that one was also, I think I linked it also in my, was in my hospital bag. Um, so that one I liked a hundred times better than I did the hospital band. The hospital band was just Velcro and it was, it, 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 it was extremely difficult to take, uh, to take off as well as to put on. The other band that I purchased off of Amazon was a hundred percent easier to put on my body um by myself so i definitely 100 percent recommend you get that even if you don't have a c-section and you're just having a vaginal birth i 100 percent uh 100 percent recommend you do um take a look into getting a postpartum band um because it can help you as well with um getting your organs back together you just had a baby and every all of your organs basically moved out of the way when your uterus was expanding for the baby so i definitely do 100 percent recommend getting the band regardless how i feel about my body um post post baby um when i first came home i really was kind of like confused um about how i felt about my body i wasn't really 100 percent sure but what i can say is um I felt some type of way about having, of course, the the scar from my um, from the C-section. So every time I looked at it, I was just like, "Uh, this is gonna be there for the rest of my life." But when you think about all the things that your body does, let's see if she goes back to sleep. I think she went back to sleep. Okay. <laughs> When you think about everything that your body goes through in order to create this human being, it's such a wonderful experience. All right. Somebody very, very tired. <laughs> Hi. You want to go back to sleep? Let's try to go back to sleep. He's smiling. <laughs> um, so, but now that I'm looking at like my incision, I definitely love um, my incision. Just the fact that it reminds me that I brought this beautiful angel into the, into the world is such an amazing feeling. Um, I did get a, a few stretch marks on my belly, but just knowing that I had to go, go through so much as a parent, um, you're always going to go through things for the rest of my, uh, I'm always going to go through things for the rest of my life now, but now it's just like the, what I had to go through in order to bring her into this world was definitely a hundred percent amazing. And I definitely would not change it for anything. I would not change the process whatsoever. So I'm definitely very, 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 I love my, I love my body. Um, I love my postpartum body um, and there's nothing that I would change about it. When you first come home, like nobody talks about how your life basically stops and baby's life takes over. Um, you do have to, what I can say is um, what I did to like help with the thought of going through any type of depression or having any baby blues. Oh, excuse me. What I will 100% recommend um, in order to help with not getting any of the like um, postpartum depression or the baby blues <laughs> is making sure that you find time for yourself. So um, I know, well, with me, breastfeeding is very difficult trying to find like time for myself, um, but that can consist of multiple different things. He's smiling in your sleep. You're so tired, girl. <laughs> um, 
um, is making time for yourself. So whether that's taking a longer shower, actually taking time to wash your hair and do your hair, um, just getting up and getting dressed for the day can help you with um, not experiencing any of those feelings. I know it definitely um, did help me with like the prevention of all of those things because I know that in the middle of the night it did get very difficult um because i'm so tired <laughs> and it's like she's like she's so tired and she's hungry she's still learning her body she's still figuring out how to use the bathroom how to really breathe how to do everything she's only four weeks so she's figuring out how to maneuver her body and figure out her body herself and it's like i have to make sure that i'm 100 percent there emotionally physically mentally um so I, I can be there for her so i definitely do recommend like getting in a getting a little morning routine or a, a getting a routine not even just a morning routine because it's really an all-day thing um she really goes down and wakes up like clockwork um she's for the first week uh two weeks it's like clockwork like they wake up well at least for her she went to sleep she woke up like clockwork every two hours um i want to say she had a few times where she woke up every hour where she went into cluster feed um but other than that like she, she was going down and waking up like clockwork no problem whatsoever also getting your partner involved the child's father um is a hundred percent another way to prevent all of those things um like whether that be changing the diaper because of course they can't really feed them if you're breastfeeding um but they can do a few things they can change the diaper they can burp the baby they can um help you with positioning the baby um but, uh, for breastfeeding especially after a c-section because you don't really don't have access to like maneuver and move around so um Theo was like a really, really, really huge, huge part in like helping like position her body the perfect way so she can like latch on properly. So that's definitely another way that you can prevent all of those things. And then um, we would go downstairs. We would, I would make something to eat really quickly for myself. Um, of course, feed her. And that's another important thing. Make sure you're keeping yourself um full of food full of and good food nutrition nutritional food um so i would have like eggs and spinach for breakfast um and then for lunch i'll just have whatever we had the uh, the night before which was is typically like chicken or fish um with uh, like rice or some type of uh starch and then like broccoli or corn some type of vegetables so definitely making sure that you have a well-balanced dinner and lunch and then breakfast as well um and make sure you're having like healthy snacks whether that be fruit or um lactation cookies whatever you prefer to do but um just make sure you're keeping yourself full of a lot of nutrients because you're whatever you're intaking is but you're going to be transferring to the baby so you want to make sure that you're full of nutrients so you can provide the baby with nutrients as well um, and then I would take two naps with the baby throughout the day. So when she goes down for her 6 to 8, 8.30 nap, I would also go back down. Um, I would also take another nap because that's just, that's like, it's still kind of like the, I guess I wouldn't consider it middle of the night because it's definitely bright by that time. But it's definitely still like, it's it's still coming out of the night time so i still have like sleep in my system so i'm just gonna go ahead and take a nap that would be my first nap and then when she goes back down i will be getting myself ready um for the next during her next nap i'll be getting myself ready the next nap after that after i've eaten um all of those things i will also try to nap as well so a lot of people say like um do everything that you want to do while the baby's sleeping 100 percent false um, you need to sleep when the baby's sleeping, especially in the beginning because your body is getting used to um, not being on your own time but being on baby's time. So I 100% recommend you sleep when baby sleeps in the very beginning and so you can get used to your baby schedule and get used to knowing your baby specifically. Um, and also having a lot of help. So your partner, your family, um, making sure that whoever is 
at with you helping you is actually there to help you and not just there um the first week um, my sister also stayed with us because i did have a c-section and i've never had surgery so i never i didn't know what to expect um so while uh my sister was helping me um like use the bathroom and things like that theo would be there with the baby or vice versa we would ask my sister to like watch the baby while theo would like wash me up or whatever the situation was um because again like i said i was swollen so it would hurt to stand um because i was my ankles and my feet were swollen so i still did need help to do a few things um and which my sister and um my husband did help me with those postpartum for me so far within the last month like my experiences with becoming a mother the last month has completely changed my life 100 percent. i would not change anything that we've done whatsoever anything that i've done i would not um delay having the child she has been a complete blessing to the both of us and we are so very grateful for her like god has spoken to us through her and it's just been so amazing like what he has what he has shown us through her and what he has shown us for her is something that is indescribable it's an indescribable feeling becoming a parent <laughs> you stretching while you sleeping it's an indescribable indescribable feeling of becoming a parent and it's it's just a, it, it's very amazing um, so I definitely, definitely am so very grateful for her. It becomes, make sure that you talk about like your parenting styles because how your partner was parented and how you were parented probably weren't the same way, but how you're going to parent your, ch your children, um, as far as your specific family is not going to be the same way either. So those things need to be talked about prior to the baby. Make sure you do that because that will also, um, ease the transition a lot. Um, me and my husband are, we're, we've gotten stronger everything that we've done has been um stronger like our prayer life it has improved it's gotten stronger he was he was there on his hands and knees when we was in the delivery delivery room making sure that me and baby was okay because at that point i literally i completely lost it so i needed him to make sure he he had the both of us because <laughs> i couldn't um you waking up? Um, because I couldn't. So I needed him to make sure he was there. But um, together we've are together our um, together our relationship has improved as well as our relationship with God individually and together as a family has improved as well. Um, making sure that we're praying over our child at all times and making sure we're praying over each other, uplifting one another, communicating with one another, um, making sure that we're make, uh, making sure that we're asking each other what we need. So he would like say, hey, I got the baby. Uh, you can go ahead and take a nap um, or whatever the case is like. So I, in the beginning, I was very scared of taking a nap when she would nap because I wouldn't know like I wanted to know at all times, like, is she breathing? Is she moving? Is she alive? Is everything okay is she, is she having a hard time doing this or doing that um so in the beginning he took care of he handled a lot of those burdens for me um so i could sleep even though like it's not something that's not common a lot of first-time moms go through that sometimes first-time dads go through that also um but just wanting to know that the baby's okay at all times is something that I definitely struggled with in the beginning. Like, I w literally would wake up and be like, is she okay? Okay. And then I would, like, go back to sleep. And then I'll wake up again. Is she okay? And then I would go back to sleep. Like, so it's definitely not something that, um, it's not something that's not common. A lot of people will go through that because you're just so very protective of your child. Um... So I guess I can wrap this video up now. Um, if you guys have any questions with like how any other postpartum questions, please make sure you comment them down below or you message me on Instagram and let me know um, any specific questions that you have regarding like the C-section recovery or regarding like um, 
the changes in me and my husband's life and relationship once the baby was brought into the world i will definitely talk to you about that um but again like i mentioned in, the, in earlier in the video everybody's experience is going to be very different um recovery uh, recovery wise so just keep that in mind um so yeah i would show you baby but i guess i can still show you baby she's sleeping my little angel my little angel bug Um, so yeah, so you want to do the outro, mama? <laughs> you trying to sleep? Okay. <coughs> so guys, before you leave this video, make sure you like this video. Give it a huge, huge, huge thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for all of the new content that we'll be bringing out. Because we got a lot of content coming out for you guys. Um make sure you comment down below any videos any suggestions that you guys want to see from us um also faith related videos will be coming back very soon um i will be bringing the devotionals back so uh, keep an open eye out for that but in the meantime we love you guys we appreciate all the support um and we'll see you guys in the next video